This is the second part in my videos on how to create a model railway building using Tinkercad that can be then 3D printed. In the first video I explained how you can create a brick wall by uh, placing each brick one at a time uh, and building up a, a row of bricks that way. I'm going to show you another feature of Tinkercad which is code blocks. Uh, code blocks allows you to write some simple code and that will create um, the, the, the basis of the wall. I, I've created this already. I'll use this example to show you. It's a very simple language. It's similar to using a, a graphical language like Scratch where you use code blocks that are, are drag and drop. As you can see. So we'll, we'll take a quick look at this. So this is the, the code I've written already. Um, it looks quite a lot, but we'll, um, we'll go through that. So I'll set it running. You can see on the right hand side what it's doing. It's placing each brick one at a time. It's running quite slowly at the moment, so I can speed it up. We can zoom out so you can see that it builds the, the first few rows and then it's building the side wall and then it's going to build the back and then again do the, um, the right hand wall as the final step. Now you'll see that we're not building a particularly high wall here. Um, unfortunately this is a limitation within Tinkercad. You can only create 200 objects. So normally 200 objects would sound quite a lot but when you're starting building a, a model out of individual bricks obviously that's, um, that's not a lot. Um, and. Uh, you soon hit that limitation. But I'll show you how you can overcome this as well. So if we look at the code, um, this is this is the code, it, it runs create new objects um, and it gives we use variables for how high and wide and deep um, we want this building. So by changing these variables you can change how many bricks wide and, and, and the size of the uh, the building. So um, count with brick out. So this is a loop that's going to um, loop over a row at a time and then this is going to go um, across the width and because I'm doing a brick wall which has staggered bricks so the the left hand um, the, the odd rows um, and the even rows are offset by half a brick. So I've, I've created two two loops within there. Um, sorry, uh, that um, one applies to the odd rows, and then the next the even rows. Um, it adds a new box, which is one of the the basic shapes, coloured red. The the dimensions of it. And then it creates that in the center of the, the grid. And then it moves it to the position. And it's using the um, brick position and uh, an, an offset distance. And you can see it, it multiplies the distance by the, 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 the brick position by the width. Um, and the, the same with the height. Get the, the right position. Then, when it's finished doing the front, it's doing the same again. Effectively, um, there's a little bit of code that's just got stuck in there. Uh, but um, when it moves the position, it's also rotating and then moving the position again. Back wall, but it uses the offset, so it's just a case of, of looking at this code, how it works out, the position it's supposed to be in. 
and then finally for the right hand side. Again, so to, to run it, um, you just click the play button and you can adjust the speed. As I say, so this is this is pretty much the limitation with um, the, the 200 um, brick limit. However, what we can do is we can then export this, import it into uh, a new Tinkercad uh, design and then we can duplicate this to make however many rows we want. So I'll just click export and in this case so we can export it STL if we wanted to 3D print it in this case we wanted to export it as a part that can then be used within Tinkercad. So name your part, we'll call this um, created brick wall Now we can go back to the um, design area of Tinkercad, create a new design, and then instead of using the basic shapes, um, use this drop down menu and under you and is your part collection. You see there's those previous attempts where I've been doing it before, but this is the one we've just generated now. And we can just drag that onto the uh, work surface. Now there's there's one slight um, thing in here which I mentioned in the other video is that you have to be careful of gaps which won't 3D print or can cause problems with the 3D printer. As you see, we haven't got any of the mortar inside here. Uh, so rather than trying to create that individually, we can just create a single block. So we go back to the basic shapes and take a box. We'll, we'll make it gray to be the color of, uh, of mortar. And then we can just size that appropriately just want to be slightly narrower than the bricks uh, which is running on a, a grid of one millimeter perhaps don't want to go in quite one millimeter so put it to 0.25 right. so we can size it so it's just a bit less than the width of the brick As you can see, it's just covered that area now, so if we can use the appropriate selector. There we go. So, pull that almost to the edge. in the other direction there we go then we can duplicate this for the back wall Just using the cursor keys and the shift will make it go a little bit faster. We we'll just go there. We do have to keep turning it round to see if we've got it, so we don't want it overhanging either side. That looks about right. So great for the the same for the back. Duplicate it. Then we can use the turn to turn it 90 degrees position that and then just shorten that and 
duplicate that and then duplicate that and then we can again move that across to the other side and this can then form the basis of the the mortar. Just quickly gather those into a group. And now if I stretch it, they all move together to whatever height we want it to be. And to create more um, layers of brick, we can select the brick this time, duplicate, and then just move that up until it's the right distance. So we just want make sure we got roughly about the same water gap. And there we go. So we just keep duplicating that. We can do that again. And in fact, if we click duplicate now without unselecting, then it'll keep duplicating it and moving it up the same distance until you've got the height of the wall you want. Uh, we've lost the the thing so if we just hide that we can select the one behind oh, in fact looks like we'd, we'd pretty much got the right height anyway and then just unhide them so there we go so that's how to create a basic wall uh, and then the next step is to add more features windows doors etc and I'll demonstrate some of that in my next video but this one sort of basically shows you how to create the wall um, using the code and how to um, increase it. I will put the code uh, make that available on my website the links will be in the um, in the comments of the YouTube video or uh, if you go to www.penguintutor.com uh, they'll all be available on there. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching and uh, if you uh, subscribe um, to you uh, you'll know about when the next video comes out which will uh, explain the next steps in creating the, the model railway building that I've been working on.